just at that, let me just, let me share. We want to share some testimonies. Now, I have a fella here that has not only one testimony about what happened during our Halloween outreach, but also another testimony just happened, what was it, yesterday or the day before yesterday, Joe? Friday. Was it Friday or Saturday it happened? That's all right. It doesn't matter. You'll remember by the time you get up here. And then we have an, another wonderful lady that was healed of something. And she is very timid and bashful. And I don't want to put her on the spot. But I do want her testimony to get on the tape. So I'm going to have my lovely wife at this time go over and have her talk. Hold the mic for her. Have her talk. But uh, I just want to... Just mention her first name. This is Linda, and this is Linda. And she's going to ha just have her testimony because the, the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, and we love not our life unto the end. I mean, until the end of our life, and we just go on to be to heaven, right? And that's talking about selfish life. Okay, my dear. So this is for the camera and the and for it to be on on tape, but we won't put the camera on her. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is the other Linda at church. At our Wednesday Bible study, we have two Lindas and two Sherry's, and what did we figure out the other day? It was pretty funny. Um, anyway, so this is Linda, and she had had a diagnosis. What was your diagnosis? Well, that it was going to be cancer or just this gigantic tumor, but they were all sounding like it was going to be cancer, yes. So um, I went to my doctor who called whatever when they got the MRI results and made sure that I got in to see a surgeon the next day. Well, I went to see the surgeon and the surgeon looked at the MRI and said, he came back in and said, this is too much for me to handle. I'm going to send you to a cancer surgeon. So they did. And so the cancer surgeon sent me off for a biopsy, and they called me the next day and said that there's, it's benign. There's no cancer in it at all. Yep. So I, yes, yes, during all of this, God did, you know, he, I had no fear of it because I knew that God was in there. I'm praying, asking in Jesus' name, and the Bible says you ask in Jesus' name, and it's yours. So praise the Lord. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. Yes. Amen. We have seen a lot of, we have seen, we have seen a lot of testimonies. I think she was finished. Okay. Well, I can, I can let her do a fast one. Yeah, do a fast one. Okay, let's do a fast one. Who said that? Okay. I thought it was Tina, but Tina's out there. <laughs> All right. What's up? So remember how we were praying for my friend? She has been found and she is okay. Praise God. Yes. And also my, my doctor said that I am in perfect health Amen. and uh, all my uh, cholesterols came in check. Um, just a little high blood cholesterol. Got to watch it. Um, but I'm glad that I am healthy. Amen. God is good, isn't he? The thing, the thing we've really learned is God is, and God always answers prayers. He loves us. The thing that was left out is her name was Maxine and she was missing for four days and God found her. Amen. Amen. Took care of her as we prayed for her. That was the answer to the wonderful things that God, and then Joanna. Um, everybody see growth in Joanna, isn't that sweet? That's what God and, and the Word does in our hearts. Amen. Joe, would you come up? Yes, you can. You can go now. You can go now. You can go. I'm sorry. All right, Joe. Now listen. Joe had a marvelous time with Alan. Alan can come up here if you want. I mean, if you want to share, um, this is the testimonies that what God did during our outreach in Halloween. And so I wanted them to share. Last week, we didn't have enough time. So I want them to share. This is testimony week anyway. Go ahead. 
That Monday of, of uh, Halloween, it was raining the entire time until we came onto this property because I know several people were praying for the rain not to be going while we're passing out candy and, and getting set up and all that stuff for Halloween. But once we rolled onto this property to get everything set up, the rain stopped. Amen. People were praying. And we set up this tent. It's 10 by 30. And we also had uh, games in it. We had three games for the kids because normally they come up and say trick or treat. But we yet with us, no trick or treats. What you have to do to get candy and prizes, you have to play three games. And the kids just look forward to it every year. Well, actually, we had a few families come up and say, I'm so glad you're doing it this year because we look forward to it every year. Because it's something different. Instead of just the mandrain stuff of, oh, well, trick or treat, okay, here's your candy, here's your stuff, here you are. But yet, this is something to get the kids active. Doing something instead of just being bored with a thing. And also, uh, we had 50 families come by. We gave out all that candy and prizes and toys and stuff to kids. We had bags of stuff there where they played the games. And then, um, uh, anyway, also, Alan has a testimony about he was our fire stoker. <laughs> you go, Alan. Well, I think everything pulled together because on the Sunday we were trying to set up the tent and we got, we got, we got discouraged a little bit. So we decided to say, let's pray over it and we'll do this tomorrow after on Monday, the day of set up. And uh, when we came in, when Joe and I both arrived on the premises, it took us about an hour to set up the tent. Everything came into to place. The day before, we were scrambled, but everything just was fluid. And uh, praise God for our youth in our church, because they came out in numbers, and we were able to carry the tent from the setup point out to the street. Yeah. And without their help, it would have been very difficult to get that tent outside and back in. <clears throat> and they stood here and waited until the... the, the uh, the passing out of the candy was done and we got the uh, stuff back down here and uh, God was in the whole process because it was absolutely gorgeous that day and uh, we came back in the next day I told Joe that we were going to arrive by the time Joe got there it only took us 10 minutes to, to take it down because I'd already done a lot of the prep work before Joe even arrived so it was a complete blessing and everything just came together like it was great. Amen. It was a beautiful day. And the blessings are still rolling through. I've got other testimonies throughout the week. But this is a big one. And I don't want to go on and on about the blessings today. But God is good. That's all Amen. I can tell you. And the rain even stayed, stayed away until we had the car packed up with the stuff. And when we were pull, pulling away, it started raining again. So thank God we know the weather, man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the muffler. The other day, Thursday, I think, believe it was Thursday, we received a call from a daughter. She was on the way to work, and on, she was driving down the, the, the Highway 18. She was going down the road, and she was in the fast lane, and she... There was a car that drove over something, and that was in front of her, and she drove over it, but yet it caught onto, onto her car. She didn't know what it was. She called me, and just, she couldn't move the car. Total stopped. The car could not move. Even the policeman stopped and says, you got to get off of this. You're in a fast lane. You're blocking traffic. You got to get out of here. And she says, I can't move the car. And so the policeman would started to push the car. He couldn't move it. He said, well, uh, maybe we can get you a tow truck, tow the car out of here. And she says, my, my, daddy, my dad's on the way. He's going to come and we'll get the car out of here. Okay. So the policeman left. 
Not too long after that, we pulled up and we looked on around there, looked around the car, and what happened was that there was this big old piece of metal that was attached to the wheel, the metal part of the wheel, and jammed into the side of the, um, into the axle part of the car. And right there where the, the wheel is, is the brake pads, the brake line. Also, the transmission line, the cooling of the transmission line, the water line is right there. Everything is right in that one spot. But yet, the whole thing missed every one of those pipes there. It didn't hit the, didn't even hit the tire. It was wedged right in there. And then we, we was trying to get it out of there. And all of a sudden, God said to us, loosen the wheel and jack up the car. Who said that to you? God did. God told us to do that. I just, okay, that sounds good. So we jack, loosened the wheel there and got Jenny to jack up the car there. As she was jacking the car up, the wheel didn't even come all the way off the ground yet. All of a sudden, boom, this heavy thing fell off the car. And we, we looked, there was no brake lines, no brake fluid coming out. There was no water coming out. The tire wasn't flat. It was this perfect sport where it missed everything. The, the brake pads, everything. We, the oil line, everything. The, 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 the bottom part of the motor there. I mean, it just missed every, I mean, it's totally the perfect place where it could have been. And it didn't, end, and we followed her to work there. It didn't destroy the, the, the balance of the tire or anything. Didn't flatten it or not. That is, praise God for that. Thank you, Jesus.